Hello, good morning, UPS 76. UPS 76 Heavy, my name is Eric. Hello. Yeah, 988, I'm just looking at your route, sir. How about clear? In this video, we are going to discuss the Euroscope buttonology. This will be a simple explanation of each button and their function. For more detailed explanation of these buttons and their features, please visit the link below. This video is intended for those who have already completed the initial setup. If you haven't already done this step, please view the initial setup video. As you progress in your training at Moncton FIR, you will become very familiar with each button and their function. While there are many shortcut function keys to each of these buttons, it is important to have a basic understanding of the layout. We will now start to go over each button starting from the top left. The menu button allows controllers to select what options they have across the top bar. The green arrows indicate which items are currently active. The connect button is used to log onto the VATSIM network and begin controlling. This is where members will also click and change their server so that they can log into the Sweatbox training servers with their instructors. This field is used to display the current login profile that the current controller is logged in as. The headset button is the voice communication setup box. It is used to prime up frequencies for text use only. As of 2019, Audio for VATSIM, which is an external voice program, is used for voice communications between ATC and pilots. Next to the headset icon is the frequency box. This will show the prime frequency that you have selected from the voice communication setup. When selecting your login profile, this process is done automatically. The profile will select the appropriate frequency and prime it for you. Note, you will still have to connect with the Audio for VATSIM AFV client as well. The end button is the ATIS setup box. This is where the active controller can set up the automatic terminal information service for the airport that they are controlling. The Open SCT or Open Sector button is where the member will initially load their sector profile. This is also where you can create new radar displays, load your alias text command file, and load all the required data files. Under this tab, you can open multiple radar displays at one time by clicking Open SCT, Open, and choosing the area you wish to display. Once opened, you can cycle through them without having to drag and zoom around your screen. This is really helpful at the in-route positions. The next field is the aircraft select box. When the controller has selected an aircraft, their call sign will be displayed here. The next item is the clock. Aviation uses universal time coordination or UTC, which is displayed here. Next is the other settings box. Here, controllers can change a wide variation of items. While some items should not be changed in order to keep consistency within the FIR, others can be changed at the member's discretion. The Quick Set or Quick Setting button allows controllers to populate their screen with extra control information panels. An example item is the Sector Exit List. This list will give the controller information about an aircraft, such as what time that aircraft is expected to exit their airspace and by which fix. The next button is the Runway Selector dialog box. This item allows the controller to turn on and off which runway's extended center lines they will see. Note, in the display settings, the Runway Check box must be selected. This button is the History Trail or Breadcrumbs Trail. It displays aircraft's previous position when selected by placing dots behind the aircraft. To the right is the Standby button. When selecting this button, it will enable controllers to see aircraft squawking standby, no mode C representation, which can aid the controller in locating the aircraft. Usually aircraft remain squawking standby until they enter the active runway and then switch it to mode C. Next is the FL button. This button sets a radar floor and ceiling for the controller. Targets below the floor will not be displayed and same goes for targets above the ceiling. This function is typically used when multiple sectors are online and the traffic levels warrant it. The next button is the display settings dialog box. It will display, if selected, the radar floor and ceiling. Right now the radar floor is ground, GND, and the ceiling is unlimited, UNL. In this area, controllers select and deselect what information they see on their screens. Items like Victor Airways, VORs, FIR boundaries, etc. In this area, you will also change the data tag 
family and rotate the screen to the required magnetic variation. Next is the distance and radial tool. This button, once clicked, requires the controller to then click on an aircraft. Once this is done, a distance and radial line will be drawn. This is an effective tool when trying to vector an aircraft or give distance information. Next to the distance tool is the path intercept tool or PIV for short. This tool helps calculate the projected aircraft's path to show how close they will get on converging headings. This data is updated after it is projected. This tool is mostly used in the terminal and in route positions. The final buttons are the multi-screen button. This button pushes the gyroscope window to the next screen. Note, this only becomes available when it detects another screen. Other buttons are the minimize button, scale change button, and the exit button. Don't worry about accidentally clicking the exit button. Gyroscope always prompts you and confirms that you actually want to close the screen. This video is now complete. Be sure to subscribe to the Moncton FIR YouTube channel to stay up to date with training videos and explanation videos. Also, like us on Facebook to stay informed about all events and progress.